According to the Department of Navy, a workforce healthy in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, is critical to meeting the Navy and Marine Corps' greatest challenges. More than 90 STEM interns from across the country flock to MPS to aid defense research. For 8 to 10 weeks, these college and high school students took part in a wide array of fields. We really like our interns. They bring energy, a certain amount of inspiration and vitality to the program. Surprised and delightfully surprised at how smart, articulate, and poised they actually are. There's a lot of data and there's a lot of information that we have to go through, but they've done an incredible job. I'm really thrilled with the level of leadership they have. It's really fun to see the light go on in their eyes. Their handle on technology, their ability to very rapidly uh, pick up on the latest and greatest in the programming areas. They're actually programming and have a, a really good results for me to incorporate it in my research. They ask a lot of really good questions that make me question how we've solved the problem and look at the, the problem from a unique perspective. We talked to a few mentors and interns to get their take on the program and how it benefits the Navy. We have students who are involved in helping to change policies and procedures within the Department of the Navy. They deal with real people, they deal with people back in the Pentagon, they deal with people on campus. This is an opportunity for them to get involved and to actually make a difference. My project is working on eliminating the PIM policy. PIM stands for Plan of Intended Movement. Right now, we're running different test cases with different parameters, and we're analyzing the data that these test cases give us. It's fuel efficient if we get rid of this policy. This little number right here is a p-value. At the Seed Center, we specialize in doing large-scale design of simulation experiments. I've shown them some different uh, statistical software. I've shown them different modeling platforms that they could use to go ahead and simulate an epidemic or a, a disaster. I'm doing a net logo simulation of the spread of malaria over um, a certain amount of time. So as you can see here, the difference between the blue and the red mosquitoes is one is carrying the parasite and one is not. So by changing the ratio of carriers versus non-carriers, you get a difference in how fast the entire population becomes infected. SSH into the 13 to 14. We're in the Center for Cyber Warfare. A lot of other schools are looking at cybersecurity and how do you prevent cyber attacks. We're looking more at how do you do the defensive operations, how do you do offensive operations. So we have one big network and then a small isolated network and we're trying to direct traffic and manage it and make sure they are not malicious. It's nice having multiple people work on research with you. They come in with a fresh set of eyes Programming is a little bit difficult at first, but once you get it, you have this sense of accomplishment. I think coding is a language that people from all over can understand and communicate through. We could go back. So the, the, the example. My daily job is to write and debug code. Essentially, it's a form of text mining that can be represented in word pairs and create 3D interactive visualizations using something called D3, which stands for data-driven documents, and JavaScript. Sometimes data is too complex. You want the big data, but then you want to transform them into smart data. The visualization part is a key because you have to be able to see how those nodes are moving in an interactive way. So if we show it well and people understand, then you know your research is good. You guys have been using the Regal scanner. Yeah, we've been using the Regal predominantly, so I'm not very familiar with this whole setup. The student interns are out in the field accurately measuring the locations of things, uh, anywhere from trees to tables to corners and intersections, uh, using some pretty expensive GPS equipment. We're able to measure positions accurately down to perhaps 10 centimeters, and we need that kind of accuracy when we're calibrating our airborne data. This summer I've predominantly learned how to conduct my own surveys out in the field along with applying the data that I've collected in the field to different softwares back here in the lab 
and it's really taken me through the step-by-step -step process of not only collecting the data but also being able to interpret it and analyze it independently. Tables MR, identification, how they identify as the Navy, sailor. How resilient they are as a division, but also how they are as individuals. My field of research is with social psychology and organizational behavior, looking at issues related to how people work and work together and are led in organizations and how they work as teams, how they accomplish their jobs. We want to understand how people think, how they feel, and how they understand their world. We're doing this resilience study and it's with the boot camp at Great Lakes. We're basically looking at how these people handle boot camp and the stress that comes with it and if there's possibly any interventions that may assist in that process. This research focuses on how can we make this the best possible situation for these people, regardless of the crises they may face in the future and the stress that they're experiencing. How can we make this the best for them now and in the future? And when we do that, that organization of the Navy benefits as a whole. What's going to come in here, and then how do you turn it on and off? With the Space Systems Academic Group is to give the uh, students an opportunity to learn about how space impacts them. So our summer interns have a real program to work on. We'll test our ground station here at the Naval Postgraduate School against a high altitude balloon out in the Central Valley with mobile ground stations in cars with ground station software that they've written themselves. This is the high altitude balloon payload. Inside of this tube we have the accelerometer, the thermistors, the radios, and an onboard computer, so a Raspberry Pi is in here. When we get this payload back, if we get this payload back, we extract all the data from our sensors and our other devices and we analyze how they did in that environment. We have a couple of military students who are working with our summer students. Their operational experience is very valuable. These students have, have not had these opportunities yet. And so they're able to share with them their experiences in the field and also to give them a good understanding of how important certain parts of operations are. My work as an intern currently is the fabrication and characterization of carbon nanofibers. And basically what that entails is to fabricate the carbon nanofoam. And then from there, um, basically we have to learn all the ways to create the foam. And then we take it a step further and start testing it with various instruments like the Instron and the Scani Electron Microscope. The project that they are participating is not only a summer project, it's a project that is ongoing that has uh, significance for society. We're trying to develop better materials in our case. We're trying to uh, basically advance the knowledge and what they are doing is an essential part of it. They bring so much excitement and youth into the school. They're ready to take on any task. You just give them one thing and they just run with it. They take the initiative and definitely are very committed. The country needs people well trained in science and engineering. We need to make sure we have the workforce that we will need to address the technological problems that will be coming.